Mini episode 1584 of the FDH Lounge is brought to you by Sportsology, delivering unconventional columns and webcasts about sports, TV, music, movies, and more. Follow them on the web at sportsology.com. The FDH Lounge. You want to schedule your life around it. A long time ago, on a gloomy, wet Cleveland spring night, two men stand alone amidst the late night drizzle. Their voices echo across the vacant station parking lot as they debate the merits of the great American radio show that have been missing for far too long. On that night, an idea was born. That idea became the FDH Lounge. Welcome to the FDH Lounge. Hello and welcome to FDH Lounge Mini Episode 1584. This is FDH Managing Partner Rick Morris here with our preview of Your Honor Episode 2.5, Here's our top five notes of interest heading into the second season's fifth episode. Number five, now that Adam's sex life has been made public, are we ever going to hear more about Franny? With Jimmy publicly embracing Michael as his fellow grandfather, it's now known by one and all that the young man fathered a baby before being shot to death. Franny's not dumb enough to let it be known publicly that she banged one of her students, but think about this. Jimmy had the chance to shoot Michael and decided it wasn't smart. Nevertheless, he wants leverage over the disgraced judge because he is suspicious of how he got out of jail early and why he's been around his family so much. Getting dirt on Adam in terms of his affair with his teacher, thus threatening to smear Michael's dead son, could be enough to get Michael under his thumb, or at least apparently so. The same holds true for Adam's mom, who was having an affair. Maybe Jimmy could get dirt on Michael's late wife. Otherwise, it makes you wonder what those plot threads were there for in the first place since they were dropped completely. Number four. If Gina's father can't reel her in, then she's going to cause mass chaos. She's using her weird and disturbing relationship with her son to weaponize him against the Desire Gang, and now she's getting an itch to do something about Michael. Whatever moves Jimmy makes will be well plotted out, but Gina's a wild card. Her father seems to share Jimmy's sense of strategy. Maybe he can get through to her, otherwise chaos theory is going to hit everyone on the canvas. Number three. Olivia almost got Michael killed, and he knows it. The fact that she sent him into Jimmy's party wearing a wire that he basically discovered by accident, and might have pushed Jimmy into killing him had it been discovered, proved conclusively that, despite her assurances, she cares nothing about what happens to Michael. She's using him to try to bring Jimmy down, and she's willing to see him killed if necessary. This knowledge will inform Michael's decisions going forward. Even when and if he convinces her that he's a willing participant in her scheme rather than a hostage, he's never going to trust her, and he'll start to play his own game at some point. Number two. Big Mo got back the big money and big problems. So now this Roger character is going to be at war with her and her gang over the drug money, and she's now going to use it to buy the nightclub out from under Gina after Gina bought it out from under her. So that's going to be war, no matter who gets the club, and Big Mo also has to decide what to do with Little Mo, Trey, and Eugene. Good luck with all that. This woman's got it tougher than an HOA association president. Number one. It's the long-awaited Walter White-Hector Salamanca reunion. There was definitely magic in the air when Jimmy revealed his exiled father-in-law, Carmine, and Brian Cranston and Mark Margolis were back face-to-face once again. It's the most overt the show has been yet in trading on the legacy of Breaking Bad, and it really worked. We keep saying it, but it remains true. This series has all of the adrenaline rush and air of danger that Breaking Bad produced, but a fraction of the logic and storytelling. This new Carmine Conti character represents a chance for redemption on that end, as Your Honor moves towards the end of the final episodes, because few actors play a menacing character that could make you crap your pants like Mark Margolis. Adding him to the mix just plays to the show's existing strengths. But if the writers make it all make sense as they drive this series home, It'll improve the legacy of this show by a tremendous amount. Thank you for joining us for this mini-episode of the FDH Lounge.